Hello, StemCon, and welcome. My name is Christina, and I'm the Education Coordinator with the DuPage County Farm Bureau. I'm so excited to have you joining me virtually today, so welcome to my kitchen. If you're like me, you probably have a lot of dairy products in your refrigerator. Things like milk, cheese, sour cream, butter, or my personal favorite, ice cream. But have you ever wondered how that milk gets from the farm all the way to the store? Milk is considered a local food, so it only takes about 48 hours for that milk to get from the farm all the way to the store. So it's really likely that the milk that's inside of your refrigerator came from somewhere fairly close to you. So to understand this process, we have to start on the farm. So let's take a look at a local dairy farm called Lincatus Holsteins to see how their dairy cows are cared for, raised, and milked. The cows on this farm are Holstein cows. This is the most popular breed of dairy cow because they produce the most milk. So dairy cows live in barns for some of the same reasons that we live in houses. These barns provide shelter, food, water, and protection from predators. This type of barn is called a freestall barn because the cows are able to move around as they please. The barn is also equipped with a robotic cleaning equipment that scrapes the manure out of the cow's area. This manure is put into a methane digester where it's broken down by bacteria. The gas that's created is used to fuel the farm and the solid part is used as fertilizer. Now the cows always have access to fresh food and water and they're able to choose when they want to be milked. A full grown dairy cow will weigh about 1500 pounds. So they have to eat about 100 pounds of food every day. Now cows are all females that have had a calf. This allows their body to produce milk, but before they've had a calf, they're actually called heifers. Each cow wears a special tracking collar that lets the farmer know how the cow is spending her time. Cows spend most of their days eating and resting in their stalls. The collar is also read by the milking machines so that the milk production of each cow can be tracked and the cows on this farm are usually milked three to five times every day. And on average, a cow will produce about eight to 10 gallons of milk per day. These milking machines are completely robotic. The machine reads the cow's tag and a gate opens, allowing the cow to enter. The robotic arms attach to the cow and each one has a camera that sees the cow's udder. Now the udder is where the milk is stored. So then it, it attaches a cup to each one of the cow's four teats and gently suctions the milk from the cow. It only takes about five to seven minutes for the machine to milk the cow, which is way faster than milking by hand. So as this is happening, the computer is tracking the cow's milk production and the cow even gets a little treat while she's inside the machine. So then the milk is pumped into a big refriger refrigerated tank where it waits to be picked up and taken to the milk processing plant. That was pretty cool, right? So I mentioned that cows have to eat about 100 pounds of food every day. Farmers will work with veterinarians to come up with special nutrition plans for their animals so that the cows are getting all of their nutritional needs met. So cows will eat a mixture of different things like ground up field corn, ground up soybeans, hay, grass, and then something called silage. This is silage. Silage is chopped up hay, grass, and sometimes corn stalks that have been fermented. So the fermentation actually keeps the silage nice and moist, so it has more water content than just plain hay or grass. Now silage has to be stored in special places like silos or long plastic tubes to keep it from contacting too much air and drying it out. Now along with having to eat a lot, cows also have to drink a lot. An average dairy cow will drink about 30 to 50 gallons of water every single day. So to kind of put that in context for you, that's about the same amount as an entire bathtub's worth. So while we're on the subject of food, you may have heard that cows have four stomachs. Well, cows actually have four compartments to their stomach, so they're considered ruminant animals. 
So what happens is a cow will chew her food and swallow it, and it'll go down to the first compartment in her stomach called the rumen, where the second part of the stomach will actually sort out the particles, and then she's going to regurgitate her food and bring it back up through her esophagus to her mouth and chew it a second time. This is called chewing cud, and cows will do this for about eight hours every day. So if you see a cow outside just chewing and chewing and chewing, this is what she's doing. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about the on-farm process, let's talk about the process that it takes to get the milk from the farm all the way to your refrigerator. I mentioned that on the farm, the milk is pumped from the milking machines into a big refrigerated tank. This tank lowers the temperature of the milk to less than 45 degrees to prevent any bacteria from growing. Next, a large refrigerated truck will come to the farm to collect the milk and take it to the processing plant. Depending on the size of the farm, this happens every day to every other day. Then at the processing plant, the milk is tested for safety and quality. Sometimes cows do get sick and require medicine, just like us. But don't worry, if this happens, the cow is actually separated from the milking herd and her milk is dumped until there's no traces of the medicine left in her system. So all the milk is tested and if any trace of medicine is found, the entire container is dumped. So the milk that you buy at the store is safe and never contains any antibiotics. So then the milk is pasteurized, homogenized, and put into bottles. Pasteurizing means that the milk is heated up to kill any lingering bacteria or things that could make us sick. Homogenizing means that the fat particles in the milk are broken up so that they don't separate while they're in the container. And then finally, the milk is transported to the grocery store where we can buy it. This whole process only takes about 48 hours or two days. So I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. You can actually find out what processing plant your milk was processed and bottled at. There's this really cool website called whereismymilkfrom.com and each dairy product has a special code, usually up by the expiration date, that you can put into the website and it'll find the processing plant your milk was bottled at for you. So on my example here, my number is 19-145. The code is usually two numbers followed by a dash followed by three to five numbers. So I went ahead and put my code into the website and it told me that my milk was processed and bottled at a plant in Dubuque, Iowa, which is about three hours away from where I bought it. So pretty close. So I really encourage you guys to do this at home and find out where your milk is coming from. It's really cool. And I think that we all have a lot of information about dairy farms and how our milk is getting to the store. So let's move on to our project. So for our activity today, we're going to be making homemade butter using just a couple of basic things. So first you're going to need a small container. Um, I'm gonna use this really small plastic container. You could use a baby food jar or a small plastic Tupperware. You could also use a bigger jar, but the bigger your container, the longer your activity is going to take. You're also going to need some heavy whipping cream. You can get this at any grocery store. It's usually in the dairy section and you have to use heavy whipping cream. You can't use milk or half and half. It needs to be whipping cream because it has a lot more fat content um, and so you need that for this activity. And then a napkin just in case things get a little messy here. So our first step is you're going to open your container. Your container needs to have a lid. So open your container and then you're going to fill it about halfway with the whipping cream. You need to make sure you don't fill it more than halfway because you need that space inside for the uh, whipping cream to be able to move around and separate the particles. So basically what we're going to do is make sure your lid is on nice and tight so that you don't get any leaks or spills. And then you're just going to shake. So as you're shaking, the fat particles are eventually going to separate from the liquid part. Um, and that's how we're going to get the butter. So go ahead and turn on some music Dance around if you want, because it's going to take about five to maybe 10 minutes, depending on how big your container is. So go ahead and start shaking.
So I've been shaking my butter for a couple of minutes now and it's kind of stopped sloshing. I haven't heard the, the cream hitting the sides anymore. So it's kind of in the whipped cream stage now. If you open up your container, you can see um, that it is kind of a whipped cream consistency now, thicker, but it's still not butter. So when you get to this point, go ahead and open up your container, just take a look, and then you can close your container again to make sure it's nice and tight, and then keep on shaking. So after a couple more minutes of shaking, you should actually start to hear the butter starting to form. The fat particles are actually sticking together and separating from the liquid part of it. So once you start to hear that, keep on shaking just a little bit longer and then open up your container and take a look. You should be able to see the yellow butter um, is all stuck together and is separate from the whey or buttermilk, which is the liquid part. So, Now's the fun part, you can taste test it. So go ahead and put your butter on a piece of toast or a cracker. You can add some salt or cinnamon if you want and give it a try. So I hope you guys had a lot of fun today learning all about dairy cows and making homemade butter. If you want to know more about agriculture, you can follow us. Um, look us up on our website, DuPage County Farm Bureau. So it's dcfb.org. Follow us on our YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And I hope you have fun with the rest of STEMCon, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye!